The bird life Malta ringing scheme has been studying and ringing birds in Malta since 1965 and has been a full member of the U-Ring network since 1973. U-Ring, the European Union for Bird Ringing, is the coordinating organization for European bird ringing schemes and it promotes cooperation, research, data sharing and conservation between its members. Bird ringing is an important tool in the study and conservation of birds. In Malta, scientific bird ringing is ongoing and is carried out by licensed ringers within the BirdLife Malta Ringing Scheme, which is Malta's only national and officially recognized bird ringing scheme. As the official registered U-Ring partner for Malta, our scheme is licensed to carry out the scientific study in the Maltese Islands. This video explains what bird ringing is, how it is done, and its benefits. Bird ringing is the scientific process of marking birds um, for the purpose of research. Um, we mark birds with uh, scientific rings which are uniquely marked and uh, so that when a bird is caught it can be re-identified. You need to have uh, special licenses and special training to do this kind of studies not only in Malta but throughout Europe and the world. And the idea is to sample as much as possible different birds throughout migration and also throughout winter and summer months. Through bird ringing, um, because you are able to re-identify the bird, you can learn a lot of different things. Firstly, you will learn about the movements of the birds, um, since there is a, are different uh, partners ringing around Europe. We can track the birds' movements around Europe. We, we catch birds with other rings from different countries, so we know where our birds are coming from. And vice versa, when other countries ring, uh, are ringing and catch our birds, they know we know where our birds are going. Apart from that, uh, the, when you are ringing, you have the, uh, the opportunity also to take other measurements, which will help us learn more about the biology of the birds. And um, through bird ringing, we can also learn about the different life stages of the birds. Um, for example, we can know how long a particular bird species typically lives because we ring a bird when it's young, and then we continue recapturing the bird throughout its, its different uh, life stages. Bird ringing is carried out on a regular basis by BirdLife Malta licensed bird ringers. A bird ringer can capture birds using different methods as endorsed by the ringing scheme. The most common method is that of using mist nets. Um, these nets are put up in places typically shaded with trees where birds will be flying around. And these nets have, have pockets where the bird will be flying in and falling in these pockets and staying there. In this case we have a robin that has just been caught in the mist net. It probably was perched here and flying and then caught in the net. We buy them from companies who make these special kinds of nets which are safe for the birds, both in terms of the material they use, the how how thick the strand is, etc. Um, from special companies in Europe which require you to be licensed to buy these nets. Nets are uh, put, put up by the licensed ringer before the ringing session starts, typically early in the morning. And then of course, when the ringing session is ready, the nets are taken down. So of course, no missed nets are left unattended so that birds are not caught and no one is, is releasing them. Nets are checked regularly by the bird ringer, so that any birds caught are taken out of the nets immediately. When all nets are checked, birds are taken to the ringing station immediately, where they are processed. So extracting birds from the net is probably the most delicate part of the ringing process. But if you are trained well and you know how to do it, it's uh, quite simple and you of course cannot harm the bird. We first untangle the bird's feet carefully by opening 
the birds. Goes. Something with the bird's wings to hold the bird during girl's grip and then take the last. Untangle the last piece. And then we put the birds in these cotton bags, bird bags, where the bird will be in a dark place and therefore be more calm and breathe normally. We tie a simple knot around the bag and we clip it so that of course no birds can fall off and we can carry them safely and our hands are free. The first thing the ringer does is identify the species of the bird. For commonly ringed birds, a bird ringer does not need to consult books, but some similar looking birds could be tricky, and ornithological literature helps in identifying such birds. As part of the equipment of uh, a ringer, we have some books which we use to consult when we need to, to verify a species, when we need to identify whether a bird is a male or a female, etc. In here we have a, a black red start. So if I would want, need to consult a book, I would find the page. Starts with the field guide first, and com where we have a visual description of features we can see in the field. Um, these are the red starts. The name red start comes from the red tail, which is the first indication of the species. And then we compare which which bird is this from the different red starts. And we can see that this bird is the same bird here, which is the black red start. And it's a male, because this is how the female looks like and this is how the male looks like. It's, it's much darker, it has this black mask, white wing panel, and overall a, a darker bird. We look into books which are, which are more targeted towards ringers. And we can read here how we can age and, and, and sex these birds. Um, for example, this bird is, uh, is an adult male bird because all, all flight feathers are all black, all colored the same and there is also no black in the outer tail feathers, etc. as explained by this book. Once the bird is identified, the correct ring size is chosen according to the species. The scientific split ring is closed using special pliers. The ring is typically placed in the lower part of the bird's leg, known as tarsus. Its weight is negligible and does not hinder the bird in any way. The ring can move up and down along the bird's leg and can turn on itself in both directions. In this way, the ring cannot get permanently caught against vegetation. The ring has a code that is unique for every scheme. Apart from the code, the ring also has the name of the ringing scheme engraved on it. This combination of scheme, name and ring code makes the ring globally unique and therefore provides a way to uniquely identify a bird which to the human eye looks exactly the same like other birds of the same species. Bird ringing can only be carried out using scientific rings approved by U-Ring. If possible, the next step in the process is determining the age and sex of the bird. Age and sex are determined using both plumage characteristics and size. Typically, female birds are less colorful, since they need to be more camouflaged when sitting on the nest. In some birds, such as the robin, determining the sex visually is not possible. This bird is another common wintering bird. It's called the black cap. Um, it's called a black cap, of course, because it's black head. In this case, there is sexual dimorphism, which means that we can identify whether the bird is a male or a female from by looking at the plumage. If we look at the book here, we can see that the female has a reddish brown cap, whilst the male has a black cap and is, obvi is obviously a male. This bird is, a, is a, a kind of warbler, which feeds mostly on, on fruit and, and insects. 
It uh, comes from through ringing. We know that most of our black caps come from Central and Eastern Europe, and they spend the winter here. And some of them even continue across to Africa and even across the Sahara, but most of them winter in the Mediterranean. After that, different biometrics are taken. The standard biometrics taken for every bird ringed are wing length, fat and muscle, and weight. Wing length often helps determine the bird species or subspecies. In some cases, it helps to distinguish between male and female birds that otherwise look the same. Fat that is stored beneath the skin, known as subcutaneous fat, is built up by birds during migration. Scoring the amount of fat on a bird helps determine the bird's condition with respect to its fitness for migration. The fat can be seen by blowing the feathers on the bird's belly. Muscle score also indicates the condition of a bird. A well-fed bird that is ready to migrate has good amounts of fat and strong muscle. A bird that has just arrived after a long night flying against strong winds has little or no fat and depleted muscle. Before and during migration, birds often eat large amounts of food, such that their weight is sometimes even doubled. This extra supply of food helps them cross large distances of sea and barren land without needing to stop to feed. Once a bird is processed, it is immediately released back in the wild. This is the most important step in bird ringing. No bird may be kept by a bird ringer. Becoming a licensed bird ringer requires rigorous training and dedication. Training length varies depending on the effort put in by the trainee, but a minimum of two and a half years is required to become familiar with most species that one can encounter while stringing in Malta. The trainee must meet a set of criteria and pass a number of exams before the ringing license is granted. Training involves both theory and a lot of practice. Once the license is granted, the licensed ringer has a number of obligations he or she must follow in order to retain the license every year. The most important being regular inputting of ringing data within the local database. Extracts from the local database are regularly sent to the U-Ring data bank, which holds recapture and recovery data from all U-Ring schemes. Ringing is a collaborative effort and ringers keep each other informed of their work throughout the year. Bird Life Malta trains people interested to become ringers and they are called trainees. And basically, as with any other thing, um, ringing requires acquiring a lot of experience. Um, ringing during different times of the year, during uh, in different places, to ring as many species as possible. And basically, training is, is a simple matter of, of uh, a trainee ringing in the presence of a ringer and the, the trainee is given advice by the ringer and, and gains experience. Bird ringing opens up opportunities to study different aspects of a bird's biology. Tracking of a bird's movement is the most obvious and perhaps most important aspect of ringing. Bird ringing is carried out across Europe and as well in some places in Africa. And therefore, when birds are recaptured, one can determine the migration route of a species. Recapturing a bird that was previously already ringed is the most important part of ringing. The most important part of ringing is actually recapturing the birds which are already ringed. And now, if we, when we process this bird, we will know when this bird was ringed um, and sort of its life history. Catching birds within the same site year after year provides insights into site fidelity and helps us determine the preferred habitat of species. Resident birds are also ringed and local movement is also studied. Longevity of a bird and therefore of a species can be accurately calculated for birds that are ringed when still young. 
Standardized drinking also helps in accurately estimating bird populations. Birds are important bioindicators and are often first to respond to changes to the environment, both natural ones and also those caused by humans. Malta's position in the Mediterranean makes it an important site to study bird stopover strategies during their migration to and from Africa. Along with a metal ring, sometimes birds are also fitted with bright color rings, which enable an observer to identify the bird without needing to catch the bird again. This is used mostly for large birds, such as gulls, that perch openly with their legs visible. Salina Nature Reserve is a very good place to look for such color ringed gulls. Technology in the form of small electronic tracking devices, such as geolocators and satellite transmitters, that goes hand in hand with bird ringing, has become crucial to study bird movement. And for knowledge-based conservation work, these methods provide more accurate, and in some cases real-time, positioning of individual birds. And together with traditional bird ringing, offer a lot of insight on the movement of birds. Through several projects, BirdLife Malta has studied a number of bird species using such technologies, including seabirds, such as the Scopolis and the Elk Share Water, the European Storm Petrel, but also terrestrial birds, such as the Turtle Dove, in which case we have been able to study the remarkable migration of this endangered species to understand better what role Malta plays in the migration of this bird in dire need of conservation efforts. As you could see from this video, bird ringing plays an important part of the research and data collection BirdLife Malta carries out in the Maltese Islands. It is a conservation tool which enables us to monitor the movement of birds, giving an insight into aspects of birds' lives such as survival rate, productivity and migration patterns. This information is vital to ensure the effective conservation of birds. We often organize online live sessions but also ringing demonstrations at our nature reserves for both our members and the general public so that everyone can observe the work done by our licensed ringers and enjoy close views of birds which visit the Maltese Islands. Throughout the year BirdLife Malta organizes different events where we actually show the ringing to, to our members and to the public. Um, so we invite you to follow us and, and whenever you see that there's ringing happening to, to join it, to join because you can, you can see the birds real up close and learn more about them. Also we will be doing some, some live streaming of ringing sessions as well and we also invite you to, to join. If you're interested in joining one of these events, but also if you would like to learn more about what it takes to become a bird ringer, follow our website and social media.